Brothers, here and now, let us, let us come to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, we, we praise You for that opportunity to see Your ministry alive and through the lens of children and whose honesty and just the, the, the raw purity of being able to hear I see you. It's such a wonderful example of your ministry to us. In those moments where you reveal yourself afresh and anew to us, that we could say as well, I see you. And we rejoice. We rejoice that even in the midst of the challenges that life befalls, that we can see you. We see how you work, even though those times we don't understand how you work. But we know that you are there with us, alongside of us, present with us, and encouraging us. May we do so alongside sisters and brothers as well, to be present with them and alongside of them in their need. That they may not necessarily see us but they may see you through us. Reminding them once again that you are present with them. And so Lord, we thank you for this time of worship, of praise. May we see you afresh and anew by your Spirit here and now. And for this we pray. In the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Our reading comes from Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. Let us hear God's word to us this morning. And as Jesus was entering Jericho and was passing through it, a man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him, because he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded any, anyone of anything, I will, pour, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. Sisters and brothers, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, as your scripture was read and opened, may your spirit open our hearts and our minds to your word. May the words of my mouth, the meditation of our hearts, be acceptable unto you, our rock and our redeemer. For this we pray in the name of the word made flesh, Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. I don't know if any of you are Washington Nationals fans. I'm not. Yet yesterday, for those who are in the D.C. area, they celebrated. They celebrated and celebrated and celebrated because the Nationals won the World Series. Oh, well, maybe, maybe back in 85 when the Bears won in Chicago. Now, I don't know too much about the Packers, so bear with me, and it'll be like, oh, really? And, well, you could say the Cubbies, on the other hand, that was 2016, right? So, yes, yeah, absolutely. So, with that, that was a little bit more, you know, closer to, uh, closer to the time frame. And the celebrations then ensued. 
yesterday and for every event and afterwards. Kind of that, that canyon of heroes they have in New York, but it's similar to each effect. It will be kind of a tipper, ticker tape parade for people to celebrate. And those that are going by are the professionals, the, the team. And then you have the managers. And then you have all of the people that work in the, um, the administrative part of it. Then you have the, 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 the president of the organization, the vice president, all the dignitaries that come with that. And you see them parading by you amidst the throngs of people. And you happen maybe to take your cell phone and try to get up as high as you can to take pictures. But what if, what if the parade stopped and your favorite upon favorite player stopped the parade, looked directly at you, and said, you and I are going to hang out tonight. How would you react? You're like, it doesn't matter, Mike. I'm not a baseball fan, so it wouldn't make much. But you would probably be shocked, and everyone in the world would be staring at you. You'd be like, you. I'm going to be hanging out at you. Jesus is, is entering Jericho, and as he was doing that, he has kind of the throngs of people that, that are walking alongside of him and wanting to, to see him and, and connect with him because his celebrity is at that point where people are hearing what not only his message, but also what he is doing as well. And so they want to see him, and they want to be able to get a sense as to who this individual is. Who is this Jesus that is, that is walking in our midst? Zacchaeus is just like any other Jew that wants to be able to hear. But the problem is, is that he is not like any other Jew. Because he's a tax collector. And yes, Tracy, I'll actually describe what he, the poor guy is going to be doing. He's a tax collector, but he's a tax collector for the Romans. And so what he is called to do is to take the money from his own people, from the Jews, take taxes from them, and then give that money to the oppressor Romans. But even more than that, tax collectors were notorious for taking more taxes than they should. So if it was your tax is $5, they would be saying, you know what, you owe seven fifty. So they would give the Romans the $5 and they would take the two fifty for themselves. That was the MO for tax collectors. And so they were perceived as being really bad people. Unlike today, because they all are certainly identified as, as wonderful, amazing, outstanding people. That being said, Zacchaeus wants to see. Now, Zacchaeus is a wealthy man, so the word stature is used very interest, interestingly. Because by way of social context, in his context with the Romans, he is of decent stature. But with the people of his own, he is of terrible stature, and it also describes his physical stature as well. And so he climbs the sycamore tree just to be able to see Jesus. Every person that is below him at that point perceives him as either enemy or, as it describes, the sinner. You're the outcast of our community. You don't belong to us because you have stolen from your people. You have stolen from us. You are not worthy to be in our presence. And so he goes up the tree. The story goes, Jesus singles him out. And Jesus singles him out not by saying, hey, Zacchaeus, how are you doing? I see you over there. What Jesus does is he says, I, hey, Zacchaeus, I am coming over to your house to eat. Which was an amazing statement. By saying that was to say, I'm going to come and I'm going to identify with you because table communion was to be able to identify with those individuals. 
And so by saying that, he is identifying with Zacchaeus and welcoming him into a mutual community. Everyone that was hearing that would have been shocked and appalled that this itinerant Jewish preacher preaching about the kingdom of God, healing people, is taking this short Jewish tax collector whom they all hate is an outcast and saying, I'm going to sit and I'm going to eat and I'm going to break bread with you. How many times in the course of our lives do we look and not only feel outcast, but the things that we have done in the course of our lives make ourselves feel as outcast. Man, you don't know what I have done in my life or what I have really thought about this in the course of my life. Or even more, I have shamed myself. It was a long time ago, but it keeps on rearing its head every time I look in the mirror. And so we go up the tree looking to be able to find that moment where we could connect with Jesus. And here's the point. Jesus sees us exactly who we are in the midst of all of the baggage that we bring to the table. All of those that call us sinner, outcast, you don't belong with us, you don't belong with me. You look in the mirror and say the same things to yourselves. And at that point, we hear Jesus say, I am coming to dine with you. I'm coming into community with you. The scripture is pretty quick. Zacchaeus was overjoyed and he runs down the tree. And he sets up and prepares for that meal. Many of us stay in the tree. Many of us stay in the tree based on guilt or based on the point that, no, I cannot look at myself the way that Jesus looks upon me because I'm still holding on to all of the baggage and all of the guilt and all of the things that I perceive myself to be outcast from community with Jesus. All the while Jesus is sitting there saying, I'm coming to commune with you. I'm coming to have table fellowship with you. I'm coming because I desire relationship with you. Enter your name because your name is not Zacchaeus. Unless it is, so I apologize if your name is Zacchaeus. So get down from the tree. But all the while, remember this, as soon as Zacchaeus got down from the tree, people grumbled. People remembered his past. People remembered what he did, supposedly. And people will do the same to you, throwing that up in your face, throwing that up in your face, throwing up in your face, you're not worthy, you're not worthy, you're not worthy, you're not worthy. All the while, Jesus is sitting there saying, Get down off the tree because let's eat. And let's have table fellowship together. Zacchaeus comes to a moment where he says to Jesus, I'm going to give half of my wealth. If I have defrauded anyone, I'm going to return back four times as much. If I go down the list, I will give back four times as much. It is not the money. It is the point that a person in their engagement, coming down off the tree, having community with Jesus, will show a pattern of life that is going in a different direction. 
because you are a different person. Because Zacchaeus realizes not only what his lostness was, but the reality that he has been found, identified, and Jesus says, I see you, Zacchaeus, as you are, and I love you for it. I love you because I will have community with you. And he goes to the point, he says, you are a son of Abraham, reestablishing who he is in the community, who you are in Christ, who you are not isolated or detached, or maybe perhaps the church itself has rejected you at one point, but Jesus has not. Jesus bids you once again into community with him. Because he comes to seek out and to save all of us who are lost. Let us pray. Gracious God, we, we rejoice in you. We rejoice because so often we either have those who have come to us telling us all about our histories, all about the things that we have done in the course of lives, in the course of our life. Telling us that, once again, we are not worthy. Remember us of the things of, of doubt, uncertainty, of pain, of brokenness, of shame. And so we climb the trees, hoping to be able to get a glimpse of that which redeems that which is loving and forgiving and real and true, that which judgment has passed and forgiveness is received. And so you call each of us by name. Call us down from the trees of uncertainty and doubt and call us to have fellowship with you. So Lord, help us in the midst of our doubt and guilt and shame to be able to receive that and to fellowship and to have that communion with you. And for we know, dear Lord, it will continue to have the grumblers in our lives, the ones that will continue to proclaim that we are not good enough or worthy enough or anything else enough. And yet, you still call us by name. And you still claim us as your own. And for all of this, dear Lord, we gather with, with one voice, with one heart in the calling that you, you have given to each of us as we pray together the wonderful prayer that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.